All right, guys, so today is episode number one of Road to Success 2022, and we are starting off with arguably the world's number one university, MIT. Now, in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about some scholarships that international students can apply for, what the application process looks like for MIT for undergrads as well as grad students, what do you need in terms of eligibility and requirements? What grades do you need to get into MIT? And lastly, some secret projects that you can do to actually take your profile to the next level. So let's get started. Now, for those of you guys that are new to the channel, and there are quite a few of you, so thank you for subscribing. My name is Saloni, and I am a biomedical engineer currently working in New York. I've studied at two Ivy League universities, Harvard and Cornell. And in this Road to Success series, we talk about some universities in the US as well as Canada, and specifically the scholarships that they provide to international students. Now, we all know that MIT is super popular for its engineering and physical sciences, but did you know that it's actually a pretty big math school? In fact, MIT is so crazy about math that every year undergrad admission decisions are released on March 14th at 6.28 p.m. EST. Yep, they are that specific to the minute. It's Pi Day and it's been a tradition at MIT ever since 2016. Now, this world-renowned university is known for its exceptional faculty. The professors that teach there have like multiple startups, they've won Nobel Prizes, and we have world-class facilities in terms of research, innovation, and your peers that you get to work with on some really cool stuff. This year's MIT's acceptance rate was 3.96%, which means that they accepted 1,337 students out of almost 34,000 applicants that applied for an undergraduate degree. And another interesting fact that I digged up, and I promise this is the last stat-based fact that I'm going to tell you guys, is less than 10,000 international students applied this year, and out of that, 136 students were selected, which means that the acceptance rate for international students is just 1.4%, not 3.9%. So, you guys watching that are from like different countries, you guys have a lot of competition out there. And I'm not like saying all this to scare you or intimidate you, but it's just to show you guys that it's truly, truly a competitive university and it is difficult to get in. All right, so now let's talk about the whole admission process because unlike a lot of the universities, MIT does not use Common App. It has its own portal called My MIT for undergrad students and grad apply for its graduate students. And international students use these portals to apply specifically to MIT. Now, I'm going to leave the links to both of the portals in the description below so you guys can check them out too. But the whole admission process is an eight-step process and I'm going to take you guys through all eight steps really quickly. Step one is the easiest. You go ahead and make an account on my MIT or grad apply. Now, step two is deciding which decision you're applying for, the degree you want to apply to, the field you want to apply to, and your personal information. Just the easy and basic stuff. Now, step three is your essays, activities, and your self-reported high school marks. Now, what this means is you don't have to physically send in your report cards or your transcripts to MIT just yet. You just have to fill out your grades in the portal. Now, in my opinion, step three is the part that you should probably be spending the most amount of time on because it's the part that helps you set yourself apart from your competition. Now, last year, MIT asked these five essay-based questions. And if you kind of go through them, it's truly personality-based. It really helps you kind of tell your story and it's not something that you can write and find an answer in a book. So, you know, spend some time on these essay questions starting beforehand and preparing even before the applications open is something that you guys should be doing. Step four comes the letters of recommendations. Now, MIT asks for two letters of recommendation, one from a science or math teacher and the second one from a language, humanities, or a social science teacher. Now, step five is your standardized testing. Now, this means you have to give your SAT or ACT and for international students, an English language proficiency test. Now, unlike a lot of the universities, MIT has not waived the SAT or ACT requirements. You don't need the subject test, but you do need to give one out of the two tests. So make sure you take these tests well in advance, probably about a year before the application open. So you have one thing that you studied for, prepared, gotten out of the way, and you can focus on the rest of the application. Now, after step six, if your entire profile and your application catches their interest, you move on to a virtual interview. 
This interview usually lasts about 30 to 90 minutes and probably an alumni will do like a Zoom interview to get to know your personality and how you are as a student. And after that comes step seven, which is where they ask for any additional documentation. Now, this is where they may ask you to mail in some of your report cards, transcripts, and other documents that they may need. Now, step eight is the most important part of your entire application, which is subscribe to the Crazy Medusa YouTube channel. Okay, I'm just kidding. But the most important part, which is step eight, is your financial aid. Now, just to give you guys some background, MIT's tuition fee per year is about 80000 US dollars, which is a lot for anyone. Now, the best part is financial aid is available to every single student. They treat international students just as they would domestic students when it comes to financial aid. And, they, and MIT is a need blind university. What this means is if you indicate on your application that you need financial aid, they will not use that to judge or decide whether they should give you that acceptance letter or not. Now, the best thing about this is MIT truly considers the passion, the merit, and how well the student can grow in the university rather than whether the student can pay. Now, when it comes to the financial aid part, the only thing you need to do is in the application, you have to indicate that you need financial aid. It'll probably be like a checkbox that you need to take off. But that's about it. After that, they use your CSS profile to determine how much aid you need. If you demonstrate 100% financial aid need, MIT will give you 100% financial aid to cover all of your expenses, even as an international student. Now, in order to show your financial need, you need to fill out the CSS or the FAFSA application. Now, the FAFSA application, and you may hear this term kind of here and there when you're filling out applications is only for US citizens. So you can leave that aside. Coming to the CSS profile, which is for international students, what this kind of goes over, and if you guys watched episode zero, you guys know what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna go through this again because it's super important. It talks about how much your family earns, everybody in your family, what your total assets are. This means if you have any land, if you have any houses, farm, savings, etc., and how much your your household expenses are. So it's basically like a whole like financial breakdown of your entire family so that each college can individually determine how much financial aid you actually need. Now, based on your CSS profile, they will tell you how much you need. You cannot tell them that I need this much. Now, the second thing that a lot of students have a question in is when do you submit your CSS profile? After you get your admission, you cannot submit and say that you need aid. That's not how it works. The CSS profile should typically be submitted either hand in hand with the college application itself or maybe a day or two later at the most. Don't wait too long in like, for example, you submit your MIT application in October and you're submitting your CSS in December. Don't wait that long because if they give you a decision, whether it's an acceptance or a rejection before you submit your CSS profile, you cannot go back and ask them to reconsider you for aid. That's not how it works. So make sure that you submit both of these applications together. Now, here is a list of all of the documents you will potentially need for your CSS profile. Now, coming to a little bit of sad news, there are no merit-based scholarships at MIT, which means like other colleges have things like presidential scholarships, scholarships for athletics, arts, all of this stuff, this doesn't exist. Now, MIT is very straightforward and simple when it comes to financial aid and it's need-based. Simple, that's it. There's no distinction and differentiation between categories or international and domestic students, none of that. So your entire focus, like I said, should be your entire application. And in that, if I were to pick one or two important aspects, that would be your essay and extracurricular activities. Now, if you guys need help with your essay, whether you're starting to brainstorm and you just need help getting started and deciding what to write, or you just need like final touches and reviews by professionals, you can check out the essay templates at incognitoblueprints.com. There are essay templates for undergrad students, masters, as well as PhD students that you guys can check out. These are super in detail. An actual person will be reviewing your essay and will get back to you with like comments and a lot of feedback so that you can improve and put your best foot forward. Now that's all that I had for this video. And I know that a ton of you guys in the comments, I can already see this coming, are gonna say that you guys want Harvard next. If you guys get this video to 500 likes, I'm gonna do Harvard University and break down everything. Um, so get this video to 500 likes. Until then, I'm gonna hold off on making the Harvard video. Uh, but subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Smash that like button. 
And one last tip that I would like to give you guys is one activity that you can use to stand out that MIT states on its website is something called the MIT Maker Portfolio. It's basically like a, a mini project that you do on your own and then you present it to a panel at MIT. You send in your video submissions and they choose and select uh, some finalists and some winners. Now it's a great way to get their attention and if you win like that is a huge spotlight on your application. I made a whole video about this explaining how this entire process works so you guys can check that out as well and that's a very resourceful video if you are a prospective student planning to apply to MIT. That's all that I had for this one and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!